welcome everybody to another installment of Computer Tech Vids, part two of icons and shortcuts. Today I wanted to show you how to create a shortcut to your modem. So what we're going to do is right click on the desktop. Go down to new and go down to shortcut. Now we're going to type in this http colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.1. Now these numbers might be, these IP addresses actually might be different for you uh, depending on um, what modem you have or uh, whether you have Verizon, Roadrunner, etc., etc. So these, these numbers might be a little different. Some people might have 1.1 or 0, 0.0, etc. So we'll, let's go ahead and click Next. And we're going to call this Modem. And then click Finish. Now, when I click on I want to change this the icon actually. So what we're going to, going to do is we're going to right click and go down to properties and you know how I hate those Windows icons. <laughs> so let's go ahead and change icon and we're going to go to browse and select a nice icon for this shortcut. So let's go ahead and choose this black box here and then click OK and OK. So notice it changed. So now for security reasons, I'm not going to log into my modem. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the modem icon, the shortcut that I just created. And you see that little prompt window, it says HTTP forward slash forward slash, et cetera, et cetera. That's our address. So let's go ahead and click and let's see if it works. And there you have it. It's actually going to my page for my modem. There you go. So let's go ahead and make one for the router too. So what we're going to do is right click again anywhere on the desktop. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here. <laughs> but I'll, I'll let's for sole purpose, let's do it right here. And go down to new and go to shortcut and then type in this address, HTTP, and 192.168.1.1. And we're going to name this one Router. And once again, we're going to right-click the shortcut, the icon, and change it. Go down to Properties, go to Change Icon, Go to Browse, and let's choose another icon. We're going to give it this lovely gold box here, or yellowish. Click OK, and click OK again. So now when we hit our shortcut that we just created to the router, it actually works. So now, Let's go and make a shortcut from or to actually the control panel. So what we're going to do is right click anywhere on the desktop. You could actually click here anywhere, right click the desktop and go down to new and go to shortcut right up here. So you don't have to go into your control panel and go through all these steps. You could actually create a shortcut on the desktop for your control panel. So what we're going to do is type in control.exe. It's that simple. Click Next down here. And we're going to name this Control Panel. And then click Finish. So there you have it. Now you have a shortcut to the control panel. So when you click it, it actually starts. So now let's go ahead and make a shortcut to 
an application from within the start menu onto the desktop. So what we're going to do is go down to the start menu and drag out any program you would like to make a shortcut to on your desktop. So let's go ahead and drag one from, let's go ahead and drag Adobe over here, Adobe Acrobat DC. And we're going to hold down the left mouse button and then drag the icon to the desktop. Notice that it's, it, it prompts you, it says link, and it shows a little folder with an arrow coming out. So we're going to drag it anywhere you want to drag it on the desktop. So let's drag it down here. And voila. So now when you click on the link, the shortcut we just made from the start menu, it displays. It actually opens up the, the program from the link, the shortcut you just created on the desktop. This is Adobe Acrobat Pro DC, and this is our Adobe Acrobat DC. So now, let's go ahead and make a shortcut to the recycling bin on the start menu. So what you're going to do is go to the recycling bin and right click, that's the right mouse button, until your little menu shows up and click and click um, the pin to start. This little, um, right here. This little, there you go. So what that just did was actually pin up a shortcut inside of the start menu to the recycling bin. So let's go ahead and check it, see if that worked. And there it is. So um, uh, let's go on to another shortcut. All right, so I want to create a shortcut to a long directory but I did it already intentionally just to show how, how using the run command with this new shortcut method that I want to show you that makes using the run command a lot easy, the, the dialog run. That's the Windows key and then holding down the R and then this window shows up. So I, I found out a really cool way that you could actually put folder shortcuts to folders within the Windows folder to make um, navigation a lot easier from the run dialog box. So this is how this is done. If you open up the taskbar, which is this taskbar, the, the actual icons that are down here on the screen are actually over here. So what we're going to do is we want to create a shortcut to any of these directories here, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create one for the quick launch. You see how I did that? I just, I just dragged it, holding down the left mouse button, and I drag it. That's another shortcut of the same thing. So now what I want to do is I want to rename this quick launch and call it QU. just like that. And I want to make one also for the taskbar and call it TA. So what we're going to do, like I, like I showed you before, is you're going to drag it. Taskbar, hold the, the left button down and drag it to the desktop. And we're going to call this TA. TA. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Windows dialog box and we're going to type in C colon backslash Windows. And then hit enter and it'll bring up our Windows directory under the hard drive on this PC. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag TA, left click and just drag TA inside of the Windows folder. You'll be prompted, move to Windows. And then you'll get this destination folder access denied because you don't have uh, sufficient administrator privileges on your computer.
keep in mind that the user account control is set to whatever uh, Windows specifies it. You could actually change this, but this will be another topic for later on. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually click continue. Um, yes, continue. And we're going to also drag QU inside the Windows also. You'll be prompted again, move to Windows, and you'll see a little arrow. And then you'll see the destination folder access denied again. Go ahead and click continue. So now, if you're a Runbox user, um, the Run Command user holding, holding the Windows and the R buttons, you'll see this window pop up again. And you remember those QU and TA shortcuts that I just uh, dragged into the Windows folder? Now you can actually type them in QU and hit OK. And automatically, our, our folder tells QU, the shortcut QU that, that we just copied off the desktop to go to Shadow Defender, App Data, Roaming, Microsoft, Internet Explorer, and Quick Launch. So now let's see if it works for TA. Hold down the Windows key and push R and then type in TA. And it opened it up. Shadow Defender, App Data, Roaming, Microsoft, Internet Explorer, Quick Launch, User Panel, User Pinned actually, and Taskbar. So what happens if we take this control panel and rename it to C O N? I did this on purpose because this is actually a file name that can be used, that cannot be used. It's actually a conditioned name um, that Microsoft puts aside for COM ports and LPT. You can't also, you can't even use the word LPT1, LPT1. It will not allow it. So you can't <laughs> name these these actual shortcuts this because those are, are, are already um, used within Windows uh, printer ports, uh, USBs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, COM ports. So let's go ahead and click OK, and we're going to name this uh, PAN. And what we're going to do is go back in to our Run dialog and type in C colon backslash Windows and click or push enter. So what we're going to do is now drag pan the icon we just created, the shortcut we just created inside of the Windows folder. You'll be prompted again, move to Windows and that little tiny arrow will be there. And then you get that same message, destination folder access denied. Just press continue. So now, instead of you having to type the word control inside the run box, all you have to do is type pan. And it'll open your control panel. Keep in mind, these shortcuts can actually be named anything you want. Anything you want. It could be C the letter C, it could be uh, control, it can be anything you want it to be. So now, another cool thing, I'm sorry about that, that keeps opening up. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, creating the super control panel. Now, people are, are often wondered and, and shocked and awed at why this happens, but it has something to do with the Windows registry and item placements tagged with um, specific codes called GUIDs, Graphic User Identifiers. So let's go ahead and create this super control panel. If we, I'm sorry, <clears throat> if we right click anywhere on the desktop and go down to New and then go to Shortcut and then type this message in. 
context actually, I'm sorry. We're going to right click, go down to new, and then go to folder. And then type this in. Super control panel dot, and use this little symbol here, and then type in, in capitals, I, ED, 7B, A4, 7O, dash, 8E, 54, dash, 46, 5E, dash, 8-2, 5C, dash, 9971203 e 0 one and give it another bracket and there you have it I linked a folder to a GUID inside of the system registry and I created a super control panel now let's go back and type in pan Notice that in the control panel, our normal control panel, all the uh, elements of Windows are located here. Or are they? Hmm. You know, I often wondered that. Are they really located here? No, 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 no. The control panel only lets you see what Microsoft wants you to see. But my super control panel link actually shows you a lot more, a lot more. And this is a lot more. Now, why did Microsoft decide to hide so much inside of the control panel is beyond me. But what this does is that it takes down the control panel and basically links piece by piece and piece by piece inside and puts it inside of the folder you specify. Now you're probably wondering, can this also work with like printers and things like that and devices? Yes, it can. I actually created a script in batch language, compu batch computer language, basically in DOS, that actually links up to this uh, this super control panel. And what it does is that, let's go ahead and open it, I'll show you. What it does is that it's a DOS program or script that I created and it creates a special, my special folders on your desktop. And then it navigates to that special folders and inputs all of these GUIDs. Now there's hundreds of them. Um, that you can find throughout your registry. If you type regedit.exe on your computer within the run dialog box, I'll show you in a second here. If you type reg, regedit.exe, it'll bring up the registry editor on your computer from within this little box here. And if you push OK, it, you'll be prompted and you could actually look through all the registry keys on your computer to find now keep in mind, this is pretty heavy. Um, you could actually find the the GUIDs hidden within these these folders here. There's GUIs everywhere, GUIDs. So basically, what this script does is that it does two things. It names a folder this and then links it to this GUID which is in the system registry. All right, that's what our super control panel is. 
So let's go ahead and run this script, and you'll see that on the desktop, it'll actually create this folder, navigate to this folder, and create these names and link them to this address, the GUID address. Uh, MD stands for uh, make directory, CD stands for uh, current directory, CLS clears the screen, echo just echo period makes a space within the DOS window. And echo off makes it so it doesn't display all these GUID messages once it's actually run on the computer. So let's go ahead and run this script. We're going to close down Windows Notepad here, and we're going to click on Batch. Just click on it once. And over here, you're going to notice that there's another icon that appears right here. So let's go ahead and run it. And boom, there you have it. It ran the script in the background, and it, it created the folder, My Special Folders, and within it, it created additional themes, super control panel, programs and features, printers, power settings, network, net shell, my computer, icons and notifications, game explorer, firewall and security, default programs, credentials, Bluetooth, autoplay, application wizard, application, application connections, all network for current connections, and it goes on and on, action center, etc., etc. Now, there's a bigger script that I wrote, and what this script does, it does the same thing as the first script that I wrote, but this time adds hundreds of more to it. Um, these are f a few 30 or so that I know off the top of my head. Um, don't ask me how I remember these numbers, but uh, I actually do. Um, in Windows 8 and 8.1, they, they actually added a few new ones. In Windows 10, they actually renamed some of these and, and moved their GUI, GUID addresses around. Um, in Windows 7, they're different also. So you just have to run through your registry and actually find them and link up to them. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, you can research them online too. If, if I remember, if I recall, um, you could do that. Um, you can Google it and, you know, uh, type in uh, GUIDs of special folders. So now, um, let's go ahead and uh, click on an icon that I purposely made here because I want to show you the differences in advanced uh, settings within some of the icons that I have on my computer. Now, if you right-click, shut down my PC, we're not going to click it because it will shut down my PC. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click it once, not left-click it, and go down to Properties right here and click it with the left. Now, you'll notice that there's that there's actually a bunch of tabs. We have Colors, Security, Details, Previous Versions, General, Shortcut, Options, Font, and Layout. Now, these are pretty sim uh, simple and straightforward. If you click on Colors, you can actually customize the console, the console colors. Um, it wouldn't be black. You can give it a different uh, a color of, like, say, purple with uh, black words or black font, etc. You could change the opacity to uh, the opacity. Uh, basically, what that does is that um, you can make the console semi-transparent and uh, make it non-transparent or almost totally translucent. You could also customize the red, green, and blue, RGB, as they would call it. You can give it different colors, uh, different, you know, aspects, change everything around. You could change the screen text, the screen background, the pop-up text, and the pop-up background. So now let's go into security tab. In the security, you could actually set the user's security. Um, I have mine set to Shadow Defender because I am the administrator or administrators of this PC. It's owned by system also. And I also have full control over it, which is checked, modify, which is checked, 
read and execute, which is checked, read, checked, and write is checked, and special permissions, not checked. Um, special permissions is special permissions for people who have um, access to specific minute features, but not all the features are turned on. That's what that's why this is turned off because you can't have full control and special features on at the same time. So now if we click on edit, you could actually customize or add people you want to have control of this shut down my PC properties, the, the actual shortcut itself. You can remove people, you can add people, and you can customize it and deny people specific rules and functions. So if we go down to advanced and click it, you'll see that you can audit, you can um, give e effective access and change um, what type of uh, principles are allowed, basically. They're all allowed on the computer. Everybody has full control. The system has full control. Administrators have full control. Shadow Defender has full control, et cetera, et cetera. You can also change the, the, the actual link for this administrator to, put, to uh, have even more special permissions. Um, if you click on it, you can add another user to take over Dark Shadows or Shadow Defender, let's just say. So now if we go to our details, it'll tell you in detail what this icon does. The name of it is shut down my PC link. The type is a shortcut. The folder path is C colon backslash users shadow defender, which is me, and it's located on my desktop. The size of the shortcut is 2.59 kilobytes KB. The date that it was created was 624, and this is the time that it was created, date modified, and it has the attributes of A, which is archive, availability, of, it's also available offline. Um, I have some that are available online and offline so that I can shut off my network PCs. That'll be shown to you on, on another episode later on. Uh, owner is Dark Shadow, Shadow Defender. Dark Shadows is actually the name of the PC itself. Uh, the computer is Dark Shadow, um, this PC. And now, whoops, I hit cancel by accident. <laughs> So let's go into uh, previous versions. What previous versions does is that there's a program called Volume Shadow, Shadow Copy uh, that is um, designed that works with this. Basically what, it, what that does is that it uses System Restore to actually save periodically points on your hard drive so that if something happens, you can revert back to a later point or an even later point down the, down the road if something happens or something becomes corrupted or something goes wrong, you can actually use the volume shadow copy to go backwards. It sort of works like System Restore, but it's not necessarily sort of System Restore. We'll cover that on another episode. So let's go to General. So when we click General, we, we notice that this is our icon that's on the, on the desktop, and we have shut down my PC. We know that it's the type of file is a shortcut link. The, the actual description is Windows Shutdown and Anoniation Tool. And we have the location where it's located, the size, the size on disk, created when it was modified or when the last time it was accessed. And down here we have our attributes. You can set it to read only. People can erase it or anything like that. You can also hide it. And when you hide the icon, it hides from the desktop itself. And if you click on the advanced, inside you have file is ready for archiving. Allow this file to have con contents is indexed and in addition to the file properties. Okay, and you can compress and encrypt the attributes with these two here. And then if you have one selected, you can go into details and tell them what you want to actually have encrypted, etc. So let's go ahead and click Cancel, and we're going down to uh, Options. 
in, okay, we, we did the options. No, actually, we did it. Here's cursor size. We could have the cursor small, medium, large. You can actually change the, uh, the buffer size, the number of buffers. Um, this has something to do with uh, the history and how much information it holds per line, et cetera, et cetera. Discard old duplicates. That means that um, once you create a line, you can either keep it into memory or you can tell it to just get rid of a line so you don't, you don't have to use push the up button on your, on your uh, keyboard to repeat the line over again. Quick edit mode. Um, you can actually uh, use the console to edit uh, quickly. The insert mode. Enable control key shortcuts. Uh, filter clipboard contents is on paste. Um, you can basically um, cut and paste within the console window, et cetera, and DOS. Enable line wrapping and section. Um, basically, if you have a small console window open, it'll automatically wrap the line and go one line underneath and then underneath and underneath over and over again. Um, so the, the whole entire message can actually fit inside that small, tiny console window that is open. And then we have extended text selection keys. Um, basically, what that does is, is um, allows a large amount of text inside of the keys. So what, like what, when you push the up arrow or the down arrow on your keyboard, you actually have that entire message being displayed all at once. That's what that's all about. Um, use the legacy console. This allows you to actually uh, enable special features like clicking and dragging uh, the console window that opens up in DOS to full screen. Yes, that's right. They finally added the ability to actually drag the DOS prompt screen, the console itself, to full window, and it can actually go into window mode too, which is really cool, and full screen mode. So let's go into font. Over here, you can actually customize even it, it, it. This is amazing because they actually removed this in older versions of Windows. We're talking down to like 8 and 7. Vista was, that's when they started trying to get rid of DOS and et cetera, et cetera. But you can actually change the size of the font. The font is actually the words that you see in the console. You can actually change them into any type of font. Uh, you can make your fonts bold, strong. You know, they, they're, they're really dark and stand out to you. If you go into layout, you can actually customize um, your prompt console window when it first opens up to display how you want it to be displayed. Um, we're talking about changing the height and the width and the window size itself, it's, I'm sorry, itself, and the window's position where you want it, either either bottom left, bottom right, upper right, upper left, in the center, anywhere you want it to be to be dragged, as you can see this one over here. So that's about it and co and co for covering this part of the icon. So now we're go going to go into the Microsoft Word 2013 icon. Now this is a, a system icon. It's an EXE executable icon. Now look I want you to look closely on the tab selection and notice that the tabs are actually different. So we have general, shortcut, security, details, and previous version. Now where did all the other ones go? Well that's because the uh, EXE files are actually, the shortcuts in, for EXE files are actually treated differently. Uh, meaning that they don't have all those other specific properties uh, that DOS has. So if we go into general, we see the same thing. We have what it's called, what the icon is, what the program is called, the type of file, which is the shortcut link, the description, where it's located, its size, its size on the disk itself, uh, when it was created, when it was modified, the access and the attributes itself. Uh, read only, hidden, and advanced also. You see this same options in DOS. Now, for the shortcut itself, we have the shortcut type as an application. It's an EXE file. 
target location is Office 2015, which is actually Microsoft Office 2013. It's located in this directory. That's where it's being targeted. In, we're actually going to start this shortcut within C colon program files Microsoft Office and Office 2015, followed by these quotes that are actually in, in you know. <clears throat> so our shortcut keys is none. Our run is in normal window. We could actually set that to maximized, which is here, or minimized. So our comment, we have none. That's if you want to display a comment when you hover over the uh, shortcut itself. Now, you can open the file location as we covered this in the part one. You can change the icon and click on advanced. You can run this program as an administrator. And that's, pro that's the, actually the only option available. And now we're going to go into security and it's the same type of concept that we did with the DOS. Now if we go into details, it'll tell you um, Microsoft Word 2013. It's a shortcut, again with the same things. So now we're going to cover the previous versions. And it's the same thing before. If there's something wrong, volume shadow copy can actually turn this back, as you can see the little clock with the, with the little arrow facing a different direction here. So let's go ahead and go into test folder. Now when we right click on test folder, pay attention to the tabs also. It's the same exact thing. Why? Because it's an actual folder within Windows. They don't have any specific functions or, or aspects like the um, special shut down my computer DOS prompt window has. It's the same exact thing as you can see. And then the only thing that is actually different here is that you can't run this as an administrator because there's nothing to run as an administrator. And you can also change the icon and open it the file location, which is test folder. You can also change the views to maximized, minimized, and windowed mode. Let's go down to security. You can change the security features also. We can go into details. It's all the same and previous versions. So now let's look at a real file. Okay, this is a real file I just created. Notice that it doesn't have a shortcut arrow. Why? Because it's not a shortcut. It's an actual folder on the desktop named data. So when we right click it and go down to properties and open it up, we notice something a little different here. In general tab, we have the actual name of the folder you see, and the icon of the folder. This time it's a, full, it's a file folder. Its location is right on the desktop. You see colon backslash users shadow defender desktop. Its size is zero bytes. Size on disk is zero bytes because there's nothing in it. And it tells you it contains zero files and zero folders. And it was created Sunday, June 26, 2016 at this time. But this time the attributes are different. Attributes are read-only, only applies to files and folders and hidden. But you could also click the advanced and it tells you allow files in this folder to have contents, contents is indexed in a, addition to file properties. You can actually index them to make, to, so you can open the file, the folder, and look for items that are actually inside this folder. The folder, the folder is ready for archi archiving. That means that it can be compressed. Uh, compress or encrypt, you can, anything that goes inside of this folder, you can compress it and encrypt it with details. It's either one or the other. So let's go ahead and sharing. Um, because this is a real 
folder located on the hard drive on my desktop. You can share this folder. You can't share a shortcut, but you can actually share a folder. And type in who you want it to share with, and then click Share. And it'll t start sharing the folder for you. And advanced sharing, you can turn on advanced sharing so people can have access all over your network. Now, now that we shared this folder, it's under forward slash forward slash dark shadows users shadow defender desktop and data. Notice how that changed? We can also open up the network and sharing center from here. We could also click on advanced sharing options and give more uh, permissions to people to share. And we're going to click apply. Now we're going to click on security. And notice that the, the, because this is a sharing folder, we have full control, modify, read and execute, list folder contents, read and write. Now, if you go down to advanced, like I said before, you can, you can actually add users. You can share with specific users. You decide what to share. And effective access, auditing, etc., etc. Previous versions tab, like I said before, turns back. If there's something wrong, you can actually select. It'll actually appear here a whole bunch of, of uh, dates that you can actually use to turn back. And because this is, this, is, this is what I find to be the real interesting part about folders, you can fully customize folders. Um, you can add special backgrounds to them. Um, let's say, what kind of folder do you want? Do you want it to be general items, documents, pictures, music, or videos? So we're going to go ahead and I'll just pick music. Okay, and we'll also apply the template to all subfolders. And um, you could add a picture in the back of the folder. So let's choose a, f a file. Okay, so we're looking for images. And uh, let's go into my artwork, which is up here. Um, so we'll click on Desktop, and we'll go to my artwork, and we're, we're going to pick just some picture. Uh, let's do a kaleidoscope and click Apply. So you have the ability to restore default if you choose not to have that picture and you want it to, to just reset and give it you know, some other picture or whatever you want. Also, you can change the folder icon or icons within a specific folder or subfolders that works with also too. Yes, that's right. In Windows 10, they added the ability that you can also change the subfolders icons and stuff like that, which is really cool because if you change the outside icon and you want it to reflect what's on all the other folders inside, you can do that. And then go to let's go ahead and give this a different icon also. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to use a Windows one this time. Yeah. Okay, we're going to give it this. And then click OK and apply. So now that we went and looked at the advanced options, let's go see what it did inside of the folder that we just changed. Notice that the icon has changed. And we're going ahead and click on it. The folder is empty. There's no picture because I chose a kaleidoscope and for some reason it didn't display. But uh, that's just weird. <laughs> it could be another glitch in Windows. But uh, notice on the top now, because um, this I chose to be music fo folder, we have home, share, because we are sharing data with another person. We're going to go to view. We have all the viewing options in here and go to play. Now keep in mind that all these options weren't available until we actually customized our folder. Now we're going to go ahead and look at a, a, 
a regular folder that is on my desktop desk and notice that the play option is not here because it's not a music folder. So if you go to view and share, we don't have some of the share options not available because this folder is not being shared with uh, other people out there. And we click on home and file. And that's that's about covers everything for this uh, second part. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.